Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's explore how to calculate or how to find, because, well, it's kind of a calculation or it's kind of a search, how to find the first quartile. Well, there are three methods, method one, method two, method three. All three methods are valid and sometimes they give you slightly different answers. So the first method tells us that the first quartile, that particular number, is a number, and again, we have to stress that it's a number such that two conditions must be true. That's why we have the AND condition right here. First of all, at most, one quarter of the data are smaller in value, and at most, three quarters of the data are larger in value. So obviously, we're looking at the left side of the quartile, and at most, one quarter of the data should be smaller than the value that we pick and at most three quarters of the data on the right must be larger than the value that we pick and obviously we can pick two values we can pick five and seven and we'll see whether or not five and seven satisfy those two conditions so let's first pick five if we pick five we have two numbers to the left of five so there's less than a quarter because two numbers is less than 12 numbers. So we could say if we pick five, then we have two out of 12, which is one out of six, which is less than a quarter that are smaller. And so that means that if we pick five, we meet that condition. What about the other condition? Well, if we pick five, then we have, let's see, three, six, nine numbers out of 12 to the right. So that means nine out of 12, which is equal to three quarters, which is equal to equal to three quarters that are larger. Now the condition is that at most three quarters. So that's an acceptable number. We can have as many as three quarters of the data points larger than the value that we pick, which means that five is a legitimate pick for quartile one under that condition. What if we pick seven? Well, if we pick seven, then there would be three values to the left of seven. That means three out of 12, which is equal to one out of four, which is equal to one fourth, that would be smaller. But again, the condition says that at most, one quarter of the data are smaller than the value that we picked. And sure enough, it is exactly one quarter, so that is acceptable. How about to the right? Well, that gives us uh, eight values out of 12. Let's see, not eight values, three, six, eight values out of 12. So we have uh, eight values out of 12, which is equal to two out of three, which is smaller than three quarters. And therefore, we have less than three quarters of the values to the right of the value that we picked, and that's acceptable too. So either five or seven are legitimate picks for quartile one using method number one. Hmm, that's a little unsatisfactory, isn't it? But it's one of the methods in which we can be found. Again, when we have small data sets, those kind of things can happen. How about method number two? Well, here we have an equation. One quarter, because we're looking for quarter number one, of course, if we're looking for quartile two or quartile three, we need two fourths or three fourths, but here we have the same equation. One fourth of n plus one, n being the number of data points, that's the, that term, the position of Q1. So let's go find out what that is equal to. One quarter times 12 plus one is the, the, number, the term number that we're looking for. So it's one quarter of 13, which is equal to 13 divided by four, which is three and a quarter. Now three and a quarter is most closely related to the number three. So the third number is the right pick under that condition. And the third number would be number five. So based upon that formula, method two will tell us that five is quartile one. So that would be on method two, we pick the number five. And num method number one, we can pick either five or seven and both of those meet those conditions. How about method number three? Well, it turns out that if the quartile position falls between two numbers, and essentially it does, because 25% of the numbers on one side, 75% of the numbers on the other side, it falls really in between five and seven. 
Under that condition, using method number three, we take the average of the two numbers on either side of the one quarter, three quarter boundary. So in this case, we would say that quartile one would be equal to five plus seven divided by two, which is the way in which we find the average value between those two numbers, which is 12 divided by two, which is equal to six. So by method number three, the right solution or the right answer to what's quartile number one would be the number six. Even though six is not actually one of your data points, it is indeed a correct value for method number three, and it's perfectly valid. So you can see, a little bit unsatisfactory, you always like to find the exact same number no matter what method we use, but in the case of small data sets, you will find there are some different solutions. So each method essentially gives you different results. Here, five and seven are both valid. Here, this method would pick the number five. There, it would be six, which is halfway between five and seven. And that is how it's done.